We just got over being very sick for almost three weeks. And we wanted to share our tips for recovering as quickly as possible from sickness. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we sit down on couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So we're obviously right now have kids getting ready to go back to school. We're heading into cold and flu season. We have this horrible COVID disease going around and people are starting to pick it back up again. And we just got over being pretty sick for about three weeks. And it was miserable. It was miserable. And I will say that, you know, on keto, we are sick so much less than we were before keto. Like, I think we weren't sick for two years yeah. before, you know, since we've been on keto. And it's been awesome. But sickness is a reality. You're going to get a cold sometimes, you know, especially like, you know, kids going back to school. Sometimes, you know, you get sick. They bring something home. I used to, you know, call my children carrier monkeys because they would bring something home from their classroom. So it's important for us to to talk about what to do when you're sick. And now is a great time for us because we're fresh off of, of getting well and we'd really like our pain to serve a purpose. Yeah. So today we're gonna talk about five different things, plus a bonus, that you can do while on the keto lifestyle to help minimize your symptoms and recover quickly from a cold, a flu, or even maybe COVID symptoms. Yeah. Let's start off with number one. Number one is rest. And this is the hardest thing if you have a personality type like me or Joe. We are so busy mm -hmm. and we have so much, you know, obligations and we can't turn our brain off that you're thinking, I need to try to do a little bit of work and do a little bit of sick bed. And it just doesn't work. Yeah. You are working against yourself. Your body needs rest. It needs to focus on fighting whatever it is. You know, your immune system is doing a lot of work. Let it. Mm -hmm. Don't try to divide its time. You will get back to life as usual when this is over. But the reality is when you're sick, it's not life as usual. And sometimes when we're trying to do everything at 70%, we wind up making a mess of it all and really prolonging the sickness. Yeah, the bottom line is your body is a machine. And if we think about it that way, it will really help. Think about your car. How well would your car run if you never turned the ignition off? Right. Even our computers, what do they tell you? Every once in a while, you gotta do a reboot. Well, it's the same thing when it comes to our bodies. And when we're sick, we need to do a reboot. So we need to get some rest. And we also really need to do number two, yeah. which is do some fasting. Yeah, this is a great time. You don't really feel like eating. A lot of times, you know, you have to force yourself when you have a cold. Maybe you don't even have like the sensitivity to taste and smell. So you're not even enjoying it that much when you are eating. So it's okay. We're on keto. Go ahead and use that time, you know, to fast. Yeah. If you allow your body to have a little bit of fasting, we're not saying don't eat. We're not saying fast for 24, 36, 48, 72 hours. We're saying don't eat all day long. When you're laying in bed not feeling good, don't grab a bag of popcorn or a bag of keto-friendly cookies and just snack away. Have one or two meals, but the rest of the day, try to allow your body to fast because that's gonna help with recovery, it's gonna help with autophagy, and your entire body will be able to just recover a little bit faster. You don't need to feed a cold right. like we used to, yeah. to say before. Now that does bring us to number three, and that is when we do eat, 
you want to eat the most nutritionally dense food that you can find. Now this video is not sponsored by anybody, but we're gonna show you what we use when we were getting over our sickness. And uh, we're gonna start off with just having some bone broth. This is kettle on fire because we have a whole bunch of it. They have been Wonderful. supporters of the channel in the past. Yeah. What we like about it is number one, when you're sick, you don't want to cook, I'm right? I'm for three minutes, put this in the microwave, stir it up, and it's it's good and hot and ready to go. But having any kind of bone broth, whether it's Kettle and Fire, another brand, or even homemade, you're going to get some good nutritional products out of there. You're going to get your bone broth. You can get your sodium by adding a little bit of Redmond in there. Uh, what we'll do is we'll take like a, just a can of chicken brass, pour it in there, allow it to all cook together Quick and mix soup. up and you have a good nutritionally dense meal for yourself. The other thing that we eat a lot of when we're sick, probably not a big surprise to a lot of people, is some keto chow. Yeah. And again, why? Quick. Super easy. You could mix up a bunch of shakes, you can put them in your refrigerator, and now instead of having to spend that time that you don't want to because you don't want to get out of bed, you can just grab a shake out of the you know, refrigerator. It's got one third of all of your electrolytes and your vitamins and the nutrients that you need in you. there. That's going to help you recover. And again, it's really, really versatile. You can use some of the um, savory ones, like we take the chicken soup and again add. Uh, just a can of chicken to it and it completely changes everything with yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, it's still a chicken soup. When you feel yucky, you know, that's, you can reach for that. Now, when you do get sick, one of the things that a lot of times we wanna do is start treating the symptoms to make us at least feel a little better while we recover. And that's gonna bring us to number four. And that is be aware of the over-the-counter medicines that you're using. Yes, so. Rachel's favorite product of all time, pre-keto. Everything is, is cured with NyQuil. NyQuil. Got a broken leg? NyQuil. Well, why? Because NyQuil, first of all, NyQuil's got a ton of alcohol in it, so it knocks you out, right? Yeah. That's why you're able to like sleep through anything. It's not fighting anything. It's just putting it you makes to you sleep feel better. until it's over. Right, and it's got the acetaminophen, which is going to help with your you know different fevers and things. It's got your cough suppressant. It's really good when you are sick. Let's look at the ingredients because here's the problem with products like this. They're cough syrups. They're not required to tell us like how much sugar is in there and how many calories or that kind of stuff. But it does have a list of ingredients and it has the inactive ingredients, which is what I care about. Right. Alcohol and hydrous acetic acid FDNC blue number one, which makes no sense because it's red. Right. FDNC red number 40. Why doesn't even need a color? Flavoring. High fructose corn syrup. And then we have uh, polyethylene glycol, uh, propylene glycol, purified water, saccharin sodium, and sodium citrate. Corn syrup. Right. We found out, even though it's not on here, after doing some research, there is more than 20 carbs in a serving of NyQuil. One little, that little cap. One serving, 20 carbs. If you have a cold, if you have a flu, if you have COVID symptoms, what is the chance that you're only going to have one serving a day? No, you're not. You're not. You're going to do it two or three times. And here's what the problem is, is yes, it may help you feel a little better when it comes to the cough, but how good are you going to feel eating 20 grams of high fructose corn syrup? Yeah, especially since your body is not used to it anymore. So all of a sudden, you know, you're wondering, is it like my cold symptoms or am I feeling terrible because I've just given my body who's not used to sugar a bunch of sugar? Now, we did find a couple of products after really researching that helped us get past the symptoms and helped us feel a little better. Uh, first one is chloroseptic, uh, which again, they don't tell you all the nutritional information here, but again, you have to learn to look at your ingredient labels and know like, okay, what's in there. We do have obviously FDNC red number 40. 
We have glycerin, which is actually considered a sugar alcohol. We have purified water, sodium chloride, sodium citrate, sodium saccharin, and sucralose. So is it the cleanest, cleanest ingredients in the world? No. But they're using sucralose but we're instead using sucralose. of the cane sugar. So you may have a carb or two, but it's not the 20 or 30 that you're going right. to find in NyQuil. Another great product that we didn't even know about, but again, we felt like garbage and we're like, what can we do? I don't want to be drinking 20, 40, 60, 80 carbohydrates in NyQuil a day. And we found out that uh, you have diabetic tussin, which is basically Robitussin. Robitussin. It's pretty much just like NyQuil, except for this is sugar-free and alcohol-free. It does relieve your mucus, your cough, your sore throat, your chest congestion. It definitely made me feel a lot better. It's they're using sucralose as the sweetener. Right. So again, greatest thing in the world, no, but a lot better than having something like NyQuil and having all those extra Well, cups. and we know that NyQuil doesn't cure anything. It just makes you feel better. But it just takes the edge off. So it's just good knowing, hey, when we were going into something, I know I'm going to reach for something to try to relieve these symptoms. So try to reach for something a little bit better. Let's talk about number five, which as far as I'm concerned, is another medicine. And it's a medicine that you absolutely have to have and i'm going to tell you no without this we probably would not be sitting here right now three weeks later not that we would have died but we definitely would not have it recovered the way we have and that is having some electrolytes now Gotta. obviously we love relight you don't have to use relight we also used a tremendous amount and i mean a tremendous amount of the keto chow electrolyte drops why you don't want to get dehydrated you don't and we actually have a friend right now who is going through COVID and we, we brought her a tub of Relight because she was like, I, I can feel that I'm dehydrated and I don't know what to do. And we're like, you need to get some electrolytes in you because that's part of the problem is when you, you start getting dehydrated, you're losing all of your electrolytes when you're vomiting and you have diarrhea. I know a little TMI, but it's the true. bottom line is that's what you're losing. You're losing all of your electrolytes. I remember years ago, I went out on a boat and a lot of people were seasick and the captain who never goes back was like, we have to go back because they're vomiting and that's going to cause dehydration. Right. So you need your electrolytes. We brought our friend the electrolytes and she's like, I can't even hold them down. She just started eating them, not even like drinking them, stick. just eating them. And it made her feel a lot better. You need your electrolytes, especially like COVID. One of the worst things that happens is you start getting dehydrated. So get your Redmond, get your keto chow drops. Every time you're drinking water, make sure you're adding a little bit of electrolytes. And you don't want to just like, Rachel likes eating these like as a pixie stick. You no, don't you want to just do that. You need the liquid. fluids too, because you don't want your kidneys to shut down. So again, not doctors or health professionals. These are what helped us. It just really helps. And everybody that we do know who's in the medical industry said, especially when it comes to COVID, you need to worry about dehydration. So make sure you're getting your electrolytes in. Well, and that's the thing. So we talked about making sure that you rest. Your only job is this. And yes. you even need to say to yourself, I don't get a Tylenol. I don't get any of the diabetic Robitussin until I do my one job for the day in. I need a serving of electrolytes and mm -hmm. just make it a priority because you're not going to want to. You don't feel like it. It's not like we wanted to drink. It's just like when you don't want to eat, when you're not feeling good, you don't want to drink. But this is your job. This is the one thing that you need to accomplish in the day. And that is to get three to four servings of this inside your body. So let's get into our bonus, which is probably the most important thing on this yes. entire list. But before we do, we do want to invite you, if you haven't already done so, make sure you go down below and hit that like button on this video. It lets us know what type of content you're looking to see. Also, while you're down there, if you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell button so that you are notified every time we upload a new video. Now, back to the bonus. As I said, this is definitely the most important thing on this list. I mean, the entire list is important. Everything is important. And if you follow everything on this list, it will help you to recover faster. But if you have a cold, if you have a flu, if you possibly have COVID, the most important thing that you need to do while on the keto lifestyle is... Don't go off keto. Don't go off 
keto. Because a lot of times, you know, we revert back to what we used to do. And that's the that's the problem. We always say, don't go off keto during the holidays. Don't go off keto during vacation. And this is another thing where it's almost like a, a muscle memory. What do I do when I'm sick? Every All of my plans go out the window and I need to reach for the noodles I used to eat or certain saltine crackers or things like that. You go off keto, but that's a bad idea. And you don't want to go off a of keto to comfort yourself. And I can tell you, even Rachel got sick a few days before I did. Even when she got sick, her first instinct was not to go off a of keto, but it was- Comfort yourself. I'm sick. I should be able to eat whatever I want. Now, she wasn't very hungry, but you understand where we're going with this. What's gonna happen is, is our first instinct is, I'm sick. It should be okay if I eat a bowl of ice cream. Right. I'm sick. It should be okay if I have a grilled cheese sandwich. Okay, so you comfort yourself in the short term by eating foods that aren't keto, but now we're dealing with our cold or our flu or COVID or whatever it may be, and we're also dealing with all of the yuckiness you get from going back to carbs. And the longer you've been on keto, the worse that's gonna be. Well, and I mean, we've learned from all kinds of different studies that we've read and people that we've watched that like sugar feeds disease. It doesn't mm -hmm. help, it hinders. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, you're not only is it are you making a bad situation worse, but you're also confusing your body in a time when it's trying to just do its job. It's trying to, you know, just use its immune system for your benefit. And then you're throwing in this, this side deal that they have to deal with, which is, you know, confusing it on your fuel source, yeah. which is really damaging. The best thing you can do is go back to number three. And when you do eat, while you're sick, make sure you're eating nutritionally dense foods. Stay away from a lot of the keto snacks, the keto treats, the different things that are gonna make you feel good mentally and eat things that are gonna give you the most amount of nutrition to help you fight whatever kind of disease you may be suffering from. If you follow all of these things, we're not saying you're going to instantly be cured, but it is going to help you get through it and help you get through it just a little bit quicker. Yeah. Now, hopefully you guys got something out of this video. If you like seeing videos like this, check out some of the other videos that we have linked right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye.